good day africa you're welcome to agrolink on aau tv agrolink oh is a goodness. platform for showcasing and highlighting agricultural activities on the continent and for this episode we are here at the yamansa farms to talk to the ceo in the person of lydia jebi asari this production is brought to you by the association of african universities we'll go for a quick break and when we come back we shall start this discussion do stay tuned <laughs> Welcome back from the break. You can follow this discussion on social media platforms at Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube and on our dedicated website at cv.aau.org. As I said before the break, we are here at Yamansa Farms where we are going to engage with Lydia Jerry Asari, who is the CEO of this farm. We are going to specifically look at pineapple production. You're welcome to AgriLink, Madam Lydia. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I know there are a lot of other um, fruits you could have gone into. There's mango, there, there are oranges. However, what inspired you to go into pineapple production? I wouldn't say something specifically inspired me to pineapple production. Okay. I really wanted to do farming, but not just farming, farming as a business. Oh. So I started with uh, Popo because I was told it's a good business. So I ventured into Popo and I realized it wasn't a good business. So I was advised to go into pineapple and I ventured into pineapple and I saw that it was good. So not that something inspired me, it's something that is a passion, it's my passion. So I love doing farming and it has been a business for me. Okay, you mentioned earlier that you ventured first into purple production and you realized it wasn't a good venture. What made it unattractive to you? It wasn't lucrative. Uh, and where, have you always been a farmer or there was a transition? Into there this was industry? a transition. I was working with bay pots. Uh, I've worked with microfinance company in Kumasi as well before. So, I've been to the banking centre for a while. I've been an accountant in a manufacturing company, Farmers Hope, hmm. organic fertiliser company. I was an accountant there. So, not that I have an experience in farming, mm -hmm. or I even studied, or I have a background in agri. Not at all. I just love farming. So I said, let me go in and see what is inside. And I've come to stay. Okay. Um, so taking myself as um, an inexperienced person in farming, if I want to go into farming and I choose pineapple production as my, in my venture of interest, what should I take into consideration before even starting this whole production in the first place? You said if you want to enter. Yes. Are you so much interested? interested? First question. Is it something you love doing? That's the most important the thing. It is not easy doing farming. There are a lot of trial and error in it. So if you don't have the passion, uh -huh. there will be mistakes. You will fall back. But if you are willing, to do farming your mistakes will not draw you back you will still continue you have the courage to go forward so it's about passion anything you do i believe you don't love doing it even in your work office where you sit if you don't love the work you are doing it won't well. go well with you yes so that's what i can say okay and then um, there are always conditions associated with agricultural production in terms in Africa. There are some conditions that makes places favorable and others unfavorable. 
what are some of the conditions that inspired you or what are some of the conditions that made you choose this location for your farm instead of any other location in any part of, the, of Ghana? The location was not planned. Okay. It just happened. But the most important thing I looked at was a place closer to my home. Okay. Or where I lived Same. in Accra, where I could come and supervise and go back home. You can do farming anywhere, but you should also con put certain things into consideration. Do you have access road? Do you have water? These are the most important thing. Okay. Do you have labor where people are around who can work, work for, you? for you? You have to consider all this before. Okay. So um, I learned that for pineapple production, in terms of the soil, it has to be low when you are producing and also it has to be at somewhere that's pro um, that has proximity to water supply because in the early stages there must be frequent water supply um, but however on your farm I don't see these things I don't you mentioned earlier that um, the soil here are all sandy so how or what other what innovative um, measures have you adopted to ensure that you produce quality and healthy foods in this part of the country um, what I can say is that, as you heard, uh -huh. loamy soil is best for pineapple production. And my land is sandy. sandy. So the best thing is to learn how to turn a sandy soil for better production. Pineapple as a whole needs attention. It doesn't like weeds. Uh -huh. If you leave the weeds to take over, it won't grow well, as well as fertilizing. If you, don't, you are not keen, or somebody will say, if your hands are not regular on it, mm. it, does, it won't pick up. So your fertilizer, it must be regular, you, and you must do it well. Once the pineapple can grow in the soil, and it can come up, the other additives you have to add, will bring it up. So that's, these are the most important things you should consider. So there are small techniques you need to learn. Yeah. Okay, and then you mentioned um, the best ways of applying fertilizer. When or when is the best time to apply fertilizer to your plant, um, your pineapple farm? The and best, how should it be done? The best times. Mm -hmm. I am not too experienced. Okay. But after hearing from the experienced ones, Three weeks after planting, it will take roots. Right after three weeks, you need to apply fertilizer for it to pick. This will be done three consecutive times within three weeks intervals. Every three weeks you apply, three weeks to a month. But the quality of the application is also vital. How you do it is very, very vital. And um, in terms of varieties of pineapples on your farm, um, I learned that the most popular in terms of exports is the smooth version, the smooth pineapple. Cayenne. Yes. Um, which, which types of, or which varieties do you have on your farm? Since you produce for local consumption. I produce sugarloaf. Sugarloaf. Yes. Okay. I'm and here to enter into smooth cayenne. Okay. So what makes the sugar loaf the uh, what makes sugar loaf the easiest to produce since you are yet to enter the ones that are more demanding to produce what makes the sugar loaf very attractive to you? It's easy to grow. It's easy to grow. Yeah. Okay, but you mentioned it's not so complicated as the smooth cayenne. Okay. Yes. What makes the smooth cayenne complicated? Ah, uh, the the other one other variety I've forgotten the name. Okay. I will try and tell you. I remember. I learned that one. I'll give you the name. It will come. I learned that one. If you don't take good care of it, or you are not so keen about it, it will rot. Whilst fruiting, I'm telling you. Whilst you have not even started harvesting, it can easily get rotten. Okay. So it's so complicated. It's so difficult monitoring it. But with the sugar loaf, it's easy to do is it does well it does well on any soil 
So that's why I've chosen the sugar loaf because I'm a starter. Mm -hmm. But um, as a beginner, who are some of the individuals who are already into pineapple production that you've learned from and how have they influenced you in terms of pineapple production and adopting their ways to ensure that you produce quality and um, more or you yield more? When I started, I started talking to people. You know, there's something called fear. Yes, fear. You love the change. thing, but you are afraid because you are pumping in money to do it. So you need to find out uh, or get information to do your work. So I started talking to people who are not even farmers and they recommended me to other people, those who are experienced or who are on the field. So I started talking to people and even whilst I'm doing it, I talk to people who are into pineapple and they give me their formula of production. When I get to know that your own is good, your production is best, you, have, you get bigger fruits, I'll run to you and do my own investigation or inquiry. I will write everything down. I will add up to what I know. That's what I do. But I also know that human beings by nature, we like hoarding our knowledge. People don't easily share. But this the same for you was way easy because you also had something to offer to them in return for I knowledge. have my own way of doing things. I have a little knowledge about uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. I know how people behave. So I will tell you what I do. So I'll let you know that I'm into it. But I'm not yielding so much. I learned you are the best. I will give you the credit. I learned you are the best. So you are the best person to teach me to know. And they easily... I'm telling you. I will give you my formula. I will not hide my own. Mm. I will come out to give you what I do, how I do it. So you know that the person coming in is not coming to steal anything from you. But rather, I'm coming to give you an information. So there wouldn't be the need for you to hide your own. You bring it out. It be very That's nice my secret. It would be very nice if we all adopt this approach. Yes. Thank you. But however, you know, um, what makes agriculture unattractive to many people, especially the youth, is the time and dedication it takes for every aspect of it to bring money. People go into it with the, go into it with the idea of earning a lot because they know agriculture is lucrative. Agriculture creates employment. However, um, it takes okay. I read it takes about eighteen to twenty months for um, pineapples to mature for harvesting. How, what innovative ways have you adopted to ensure that yours um, bears fruit and then you harvest earlier than the, this scheduled date? You hear it takes eighteen months. Eighteen yes. months is one and a half years. Yes. If you want the plant to be bigger. The plants can take up to a year mm. before you force it. We have a term called forcing. forcing. Can you explain forcing? Forcing is the procedure where we put some uh, additives. I'll put it in the right mm -hmm. way, additives. We apply it to the pineapple. To It's a pressure. Mm -hmm. some, it's called, it, it, it brings out the pressure of the fruit. So it will bring the fruit out by pressure. So that's called, that procedure is called forcing. When you really take good care of the plants, uh -huh. it will grow faster. It will be less than the 18 months as you've had. At least you can take a year, that's 12 months. After seven months, you can force. Right after the seven months, then by four to five months, four to five months, you will see fruits. It will be ready for harvesting. So the innovative way is just taking good care. It's just the same procedure. There's no other technology. The same procedure. Just that the fertilizer work of the fertilizing, your own way should be different. Mm, your own way should be different. Yes. When I started, mm -hmm. I didn't know so much. So the quantity of fertilizer was so small. Now I've learned from people that I should apply more, more fertilizer and quality fertilizer. Mm. More and quality fertilizer. And I have been introduced to a new small package fertilizer called Harvest More. 
this will make you yield more. I didn't know, but I just, you just learned, learned from, from someone. From someone. Okay. Most often, you need to make uh, sure that the plants are free from weeds, hmm. either by applying weedy side. We have special pineapple weedy side, very expensive, or you weed through so that it will be free from weeds. This will also make it grow well. Yeah. So um, taking pineapple, the pineapple industry, as um, comparing it to, let's say, the mango industry, there are seasons you go to the market, you find a whole lot of pineapples, you find a whole lot of other fruits. And there are other seasons you go, and then there's basically none, which makes the price shoot up. Yes. What are some of the, um, what are some of the ways you've adopted to ensure that you beat the whole, all seasons of production? Thank you. It's a very good question. When I came in, I told you I was green. I had no idea, no idea. even about any form of farming. Yet I decided. So I, I studied the market and I realized that people normally plant their pineapple during the rainy seasons so that it will get water to grow mm -hmm. faster. faster. When it happens that way, it will be so much in the market. Everybody will have pineapple. All the farmers, their product will be ready. So I studied the market and I said, that no, I will do my own. I will try and harvest my pineapple during the uh, dry, dry season, season, where there's no pineapple. pineapple. When it comes, the people will beat you for the pineapple. So that's my own way of beating the market. When it happens that way, the prices are up than the normal price because it's dry season. People are not planting. But you do it. The small, the small ones you get, or the little you get, the little production you get, still you get your money. Okay. So, um, what happens during the rainy season for you? Since you harvest more during the dry season, what happens? It's, it, it, with pineapple, it doesn't matter whether it's rainy season or, or dry, dry season. season. When it comes to the planting, but when it comes to forcing, you know, from the forcing period to the harvesting period is five months. So you make sure that the period won't coincide the rainy season, the rainy season. where everybody is harvesting. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll go for a short break and when we return, we shall continue with this discussion. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet with our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming equipment, among others, you are sure to get the best of productions. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Ligon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board, or contact the AAU Studios via the following email addresses, info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, or ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on plus 233-244-736280. You're welcome back from the break. This is still Agolink on AAU TV. And we are engaging with the CEO of Yamansa Farms in the person of Lydia Jebi Asari. We've been engaging with her on pineapple production in Ghana. So like any venture, any agriculture or even a corporate venture, with time, you might, due to monopoly, you might have an advantage. But with time, prices keep dropping. Because there are other people who are entering and then maybe adopting better ways of production than you are. Is it the same for the kind of industry? No, please. How? The reason being that no one would love to sell to lose. We all want profits. Once you and I know, if you are a farmer, I'm a farmer, you know how costly production is. You won't sell below your cost. You sell above your cost. So there's no way Somebody will sell below his or her cost. No one will agree. No one will agree. That makes it very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yes. Right. Okay. So um, you consult with other farmers to know the trending market price. Yes. Or you go with yours. No. 
I, I, I for one, I told you earlier on, I didn't know, this year I didn't know the price. That season was a dry season. There were no fruits. Thanks be to God. Fortunately, or unfortunately, there was a, is it a pandemic, or, yeah, there was a pandemic of coronavirus. And it came out that um, people should eat pineapple. So it boosts the market, I'm telling you. They weren't, uh, they didn't allow us to sleep. On bed, people will come, pim, 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 we want to buy pineapples with trucks. I didn't know the price initially, so one loyal customer came with his price. Because that, that's also the uh, disadvantaged part of my own. Mm -hmm. I should have called some pineapple, mm -hmm. yeah, to consult them the price about it. So earlier on, I was selling at a certain price. Then when I got to know later, I also increased my price. There were no pineapple anywhere except my place. I'm telling you. Pineapple were there, but because my price was low, and I had pineapple. You know, I told you earlier, people don't want to plant during or fall during the uh, dry season. During the dry, the dry season, no rain. So they won't yield much. But I will make sure with my business background. I'll make sure I put calculator, pen, and paper on it. So as much as I spend on it, I will have to do it in such a way that I won't lose. So I love the dry, during the dry year, harvesting during the dry season. That's where people want fruit. A lot of people are not harvesting. I will harvest my own. If it's small, at a higher price, they will still buy. Exactly. So as a beginner, in quotes, in this venture, <laughs> how how did you how do you still attract your how do you still attract people to come and buy from you? How do you get your market? Yes, I didn't have a lot of markets. I had few, but with pineapple, it sells itself. Hmm. To begin with, it sells itself. We have people going around the farm. People, we have agents. They look for uh, pineapple for buyers, and they will charge. So they will be going around. Even when I'm not here, somebody you hear somebody calling you. Your pineapple is ready. I want to buy. Yes, there's already market. Everybody eats pineapple. Who hates pineapple? It's a sweet food. So the market is already there. In case you don't have a lot of customers, engage a lot of agents you don't pay the agent fee the buyers pay the agent fee exactly so in my case this year one guy was here so as i was saying this uh, coronavirus issue brought a lot of problems and a lot of advantages as well people were eating a lot of pineapple meanwhile because of the uh, rules and regulations by the government a lot of markets were closed, you remember. So people were not coming to buy. So one lawyer customer told me his market is closed down. This is fruits. Mm -hmm. okay. So I had to consult people, call people to come and buy. So I called one agent, and this one particular agent brought me about hundreds of customers, mm. I'm telling you. One person. One person. He too, he wants money. So when people come, he can bring three people, but one person can get materials or fruits. You understand? So I have, and I make sure I keep your contacts. Even if I can't supply you, I make sure I take your contacts. In any time you have pineapple, you have a ready market. Whether uh, there's plenty of pineapple in the market or not, I will still have pine. Uh, I will have customers. I have a strategy. If I call you and you don't come, right, a time will come or a season will come, there wouldn't be a lot of pineapple in the market. So we will sell to those. When there's bumper harvest, those who come to buy, and when there's no bumper harvest, we sell to those who come to buy during the bumper harvest. Are you getting the mm -hmm. water? Do you understand? Mm, yes. So it's a strategy. Okay, yes, that makes, that makes sense.
someone who is targeting the market yes, and profit. Yes, exactly. So I keep their contacts. When you come to, I make sure, you know, you know market women and market men, even the men they do, they will come. They have no pineapple, no way. So they will come with happy face and all that. Mm -hmm. We will take the food for them. But when it comes to counting and paying, you will see the way they do their things. But I make sure before you leave, you're happy. No, yeah, you are happy and um, everything is peaceful. So that next time you come. I never fight or have quarrel with a customer. I don't do that. It can come anyway, but make sure at the end of it all you are ending with peace. Sometimes I have some fruits, other fruits around. I will just give you some of them as gifts. You'll be very happy. Even when you see some even sleep here at dawn waiting for a truck one uh, uh, one customer came here around uh, 2 noon mm, 2, uh, 2 p.m is it 2 p.m yeah she left here 2 a.m because she didn't have truck so she has to wait for the truck and such person you can't eat your supper and leave the person you have to save the person so these are the little little things I do. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So um, looking at the transport system, it looks like most um, most pineapple farms or even most agricultural produce are planted or grown at remote areas. But then the transport channel is sometimes very poor, like the road leading here. For somebody to actually get, person must have a good car. And the person must have the, the zeal or be very much interested in the color production or the person will be able to come. And for your produce to be highly perishable, um, how or what's the way forward for you in terms of the transport channel? It has been a challenge. A customer came here to buy fruits. The following morning, people were coming here telling me, Madam, who came here to buy pineapple? We saw a lot of pineapple on the road, so they picked them because the road is no good. A lot of them will pour from the track. Uh, we have assemblyman in this area. He's aware. But we, the farmers here, are so much concerned. So we do have uh, some meetings. We are ready to do it for ourselves because the government is not helping us. So we are doing our own contribution to buy covers. You saw that place where the, there's a small river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to buy our own covets and make our own road. We don't have a choice. If the government is not helping, you have to help yourself. Yeah. So, um, would you say this is a very cost-intensive venture? Looking at labor, land required, as well as capital, initial capital required to start. Is that time consuming too. Mm -hmm. Highly capital intense, I'm telling you. So, if we don't have a lot of people doing uh, pineapple, mm -hmm. exactly, not so much people are doing pineapple. You, you will see a lot of people doing plantain, cassava, okra poor because they don't spend so much but with even with pineapple we decide mm. it costs so much so they will draw back so we don't have money we can't go but i won't do this to discourage other people who want to enter into pineapple production you can start small you can start small with the little you have and with the help of other people when I say the help of other people, their knowledge can start small. The most interesting thing and the important thing in pineapple production is that when you want to start, you have to buy suckers. Transporting the suckers to your place or your farmland is costly. The suckers itself is costly. Transportation is costly. Labor work. It's costly, but when you have, you try and plant the first batch, you get your own suckers, so you wouldn't go and buy again. 
So you can start small and you can grow big. That's what I can say. And um, I see that you are doing a lot in terms of powerful production, even other ventures, at fish farm and all that. Would you be willing to train the youth, especially those who are mm-hmm. done with um, higher education, but don't have don't have any other thing going on, plan on going into um, pineapple production? It will be my pleasure. Thing. So you are open to training them? I'm telling you, it will be my pleasure to teach. Yeah, I've taught before anyway. You have? We go as a polytechnic. Oh, agri or business? Business. Okay. I was a part time lecturer whilst okay. working as an accountant in a different company. Yeah. Seems to be a jack of all trades and a master of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and please, what final words do you have for someone who's thinking of venturing into pineapple production or any other venture in terms of agriculture? I would advise that if you are interested in farming you first of all interested i use the word mm-hmm. interested you must be happy to do what you want to do you must love what you want to do so you should get have the interest before you come in the money issue shouldn't come to your mind first mm-hmm. you should be happy or be ready to love it's not easy farming is a very difficult even the villages are running to uh, uh, big cities and even across the country for greener pastures. But if you have a little education and you add to farming, you are gone. It's good, very lucrative. You can start small, but you should love it. It shouldn't be something like. Uh, I don't have any other way that thing doing, to so doing so. I just do this in the meantime. No. You can try and make mistakes. Still, once you love it, you have to continue. And you conquer. Eventually, you conquer. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for, the, for being so hospitable to us. You're welcome. We hope next time when we call on you for any other assistance. You You're welcome. Too. Thank you very Thank much. you for coming. Yeah. This brings us to the end of this episode of AgroLink on AAU TV. If you just tuned in, you can go back and watch on our social media handles at Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube and on our dedicated website at tv.aau.org. If you are someone who is interested in venturing into any agricultural field, especially pineapple production, you have no other place to look than Young Man's of Farms, where Madam Lydia will receive you with open arms and teach you any other thing you need to know about pineapple, about, about pineapple production. Do not forget to subscribe to all our social media handles and stay tuned on AUTV for more educated programs. Thank you.